morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for online service today. I love Sundays because we get to come together, even online, to have church together. Um, I'm Keith Hart. I'm one of the youth coordinators here at CT. Yes, hello, everybody. I'm Megan Mays. I'm also one of the youth coordinators here at CT. Um, and we're so glad that you were able to join us this morning for online service. And today, I was thinking of Psalm 118.24 in the NLT version. It says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And it just reminded me that I'm so glad to worship God today together. And I'm choosing to um, rejoice and be glad for today because um, this day God made it and I'm just so thankful. I love that verse, Megan. And I do agree, um, we have a choice to make. Um, we have a choice to celebrate and rejoice in the day that the Lord made. Um, you know, yesterday was our country's Independence Day celebration. And that got me thinking about how blessed we are to live in this country where we do get to um, worship God freely. And we do get to come together, even online. Um, to worship God and that's such a blessing. I agree Keith that we're just so blessed to live in this country And I'm also really thankful for the era that we live in which is the technological era um, You know, it's such a blessing that we're able to come together with each other through online church and what a blessing it is And it's just another reason to rejoice um, and celebrate today. We got another great service coming your way today um, and we're especially blessed because um, Pastor Morris Hunt the founding pastor of CT has got a great word for you today and we're super excited about it. Pastor Hunt is going to be talking um, today about life's greatest pursuit and I know this message um, is going to inspire all of us. Wherever you're at, would you join me in prayer today? Lord, I thank you so much that you're so present, Lord, and I thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord, and I thank you most of all that you're just so accessible, Lord, and you're always here to meet us wherever we're at, Lord, and whatever storm we're at, Lord God, you're there to meet us. And I just pray for just a sweeping of your presence across everybody in this church, Lord, at home or in person with us today, that you just meet us where we're at. And so you know I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and happy Independence Day weekend. You know, as Keith and Megan said earlier, it's a privilege to do online service with you each and every week. And so I just want to take this moment to say thank you for joining us today. You know, we spend time seeking God about what we offer to you in this service each and every week. And our goal is to be able to encourage you and strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. This is a very interesting time to be alive, but none of these things that we are facing today have taken God by surprise. You see, God is awesome and he's still in control. He's still on the throne and he's still watching over you. So no matter what personal battles you're facing right now, I want you to know that God loves you and he is able to help you to be victorious. You know, I'd like to take a moment and just pray over you today if you would. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you now. We thank you, God, that you are watching over us, that you are taking care of us, that we are safe in the, in the very palm of your hand. And so, Lord, we, today I take, I just ask that each and every need that is it, it, today is being stretched out to you, that's being given to you, Lord, you would take it, you would heal, that you would uh, redeem, that you would uh, bring restoration, that, Lord, you would provide it, whatever that need is, Lord, we give it to you and we ask you to touch and minister like only you can so that you will bring victory into that situation. Your word promises you're working all things together for good and we're trusting you to do that today in each one of these situations. And Lord, we give it to you. We thank you for it and we ask you, Lord, now to feed us, feed our spirit, help us to grow more like you in everything that we say and do. We give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah.
Well, this morning I've asked Pastor Morris Hunt to come and bring us a message from the Word of God. Pastor Hunt, along with his wife Charlene, founded Calvary Temple 31 years ago. God gave them a vision, and, 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 and CT is really just the fruit of that vision that God gave them for this area. We're privileged to have them as an integral part of this church. Uh, they are wonderful people who are very generous and supportive and really just an all-around blessing uh, to everyone here at Calvary Temple. I know you're going to be challenged. You're going to be inspired by Pastor Hunt's message today. So please welcome with me, if you would, Pastor Morris Hunt. We want to welcome you this morning to Calvary Temple uh, through um, the internet. And we trust today that the Word of God will become alive in your hearts as we uh, share with you today. On this fifth day of July, 2020, I think it good that we remember the words of the Declaration of Independence, penned in ink and then later in blood and in numbers of times in blood of war. On that Thursday, the 4th of July, 1776, words of the second paragraph have become synonymous with the word America, with the words freedom. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So wrote Thomas Jefferson. Now I might as well throw this in here. If your birthday was July the 4th, 1776, and you are watching this today, you are 244 years old as of yesterday. Maybe you know somebody whose birthday is the 4th of July. I do. My sister. Hi, sis. Happy birthday to you. What a figure of freedom these words have been these past 244 years. From all over the world, people who have lived in tyranny have yearned to be a part of this life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now in these troubled days that we are living in, you and I would do well to salute them, whomever they may be, who still get a little tingle or goosebumps when these words are read. Great words. What a pursuit. The pursuit of happiness. Some people pursue happiness, liberty, life, all of their life and never find it. But these words do not constitute the greatest pursuit known to mankind. And I would submit as a follower, a believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul the Apostle's words in Philippians 3.10 have had no doubt and will have a greater impact on the human race. Eternity will prove my point. Of this I have no doubt. His words are, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering, becoming like Him in death. That, my friend, is the greatest pursuit. None other comes with the in shouting distance of this life pursuit that Paul writes about. The obvious question that somebody just might ask at this point is, what do you mean, Pastor Hunt? Is it possible that Paul did not know Christ before he said these words? Well, of course, that's not what it means. What it means is that Paul wanted to know Christ in a greater way every day of his life. And other translations give a little different view of what Paul the Apostle said. I want to know Christ. Perhaps the Amplified Bible that I read on my, in my daily devotions expresses it best. For my determined purpose is that I may know Him, Paul says, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him. And recognizing, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of His person more strongly 
and more clearly. On this 4th of July weekend, I would hope that every person under the sound of my voice would make this their life's greatest pursuit. To know Christ more progressively, more deeply and intimately, becoming more acquainted with Him. There are three guidelines that you and I would do well to note and follow if we intend to make this our life's greatest pursuit. Now these guidelines are found in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. But I want us to look today at 1 Chronicles 28.9, some of David's last words to his son Solomon. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and a willing mind, for the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. The Lord drew my mind to these thoughts a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't get them out of my mind and thoughts. And though I, my theme comes from Paul's writing in Philippians, my outline, my thoughts largely come from 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9. Look at these guidelines with me, for they have not changed. Not only did they apply to Solomon, but they apply to every believer in Christ Jesus. They are the Old Testament guidelines that parallel Paul's greatest pursuit in Philippians. So look at them with me. The first guideline is this. Seek God every day to fulfill your life's greatest pursuit. I will repeat it again. Seek God every day in order to fulfill your life's greatest pursuit. Because David said to his son Solomon, If you seek him, he will be found by you. Now you and I can never know Christ as Paul describes unless we seek him. We will never find him unless we seek him as King David exhorts us. It is that deep and intimate knowledge that we are called to pursue every day that we live. Notice what Paul says in the following verses of Philippians 3.10, especially verse 12. I don't claim, he said, to have fully obtained, and I'll put, insert their life's greatest pursuit. But he said, I am striving. I press on. I am seeking to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Namely, he says, that prize at the go line of life's road. I want to ask you, what are you seeking in life? What demands your time, your talents, your affection each day you live? Are you seeking to know Christ more deeply, more intimately? I hope you are. But maybe you're a Christian and you've been sidetracked from the greatest pursuit. It's so easy to be sidetracked in our pursuit of Christ and His kingdom. Even in this COVID-19 quarantine, some people have allowed boredom or a loss of job or less finance, maybe worry, maybe fear of the future, to rob them of their spiritual pursuit. I hope that's not you. But if it is, you can change that today. I can tell you that I've spoken with others who have taken this time of quarantine as an opportunity to seek Christ, to pray more, to read the Word more, to study the Word, to draw closer to Christ, to know Him in a greater way. The Bible has many scriptures on the necessity of seeking God and seeking God every day. Psalm 63, David's psalm, where he says, You are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land 
where there is no water. Jesus in Matthew 6, spoke these well-known words, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So seek God. Seek Him every day. God is waiting for you to come to Him right now and begin that life's pursuit of seeking Him. Let's look at David's second guideline for Solomon. Serve God. Solomon says to David, serve God every day in order to fulfill life's greatest pursuit. Here's David's words to Solomon. Serve Him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. Now those words of David so speak to the servanthood of a godly person. Solomon, you are going to be the next king over Israel. You will sit upon my throne. You will govern the people. But in actuality, Solomon, you must learn to be a servant and have a servant's heart. We are called to be servants. Disciples of Jesus Christ, who was the greatest servant of all. No matter what our vocation in life may be, first and foremost, We are called to be servants and to serve God every day. A servant is one who does the will of his or her master. A servant is one who hears the voice of his or her master and hastens to obey it. A servant is one who puts his own personal desires aside and serves the best interest of his or her master. Think about these words from Paul here in Philippians 3, 7. The Amplified Bible says, But whatever former things were gained to me as I thought then, these things, once regarded as advancements in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolutely worthless, for the sake of Christ and the purpose which He has given me. I'm not here to lay some extra burden in life upon your shoulders, but this is life. It's the life we as Christians and followers of Christ are called to. This is our greatest pursuit, is to serve God every day, to hear His voice, to seek His will, to share with the world His life that He offers. And I can tell you that this is where the joy bells of life begin to ring in our hearts. This is where the rivers of joy flow through us. This is where we know that we have fought a good fight and we have kept the faith. When this life is over, believe me when I tell you that it will be worth it all to hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. That's true happiness. And that is part of the greatest pursuit there possibly can be. Thirdly, if we would enjoy ourselves in life's greatest pursuit, we must stay focused. Look at those words David wrote to Solomon. Think about them. Here's what he said. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. I have to tell you, I wish Solomon's life had ended better than it did. 
Have you ever wondered why Solomon's name is not listed in Hebrews 11 in that great chapter about great men who overcame through faith? I think we know the answer because Solomon failed to stay in there. Solomon failed to stick to it. Solomon failed to stay focused. Late in his life, Women whom he had married, who followed pagan gods, turned his focus away from seeking and serving God. The warning is genuine. It is God's word from David to Solomon and then to you and me. If we ever lose our focus on our greatest pursuit, we will be in danger of losing all that is the that is of eternal value for us. You know, when I prepared this, I knew I could not end this sermon on such a negative thought. And that's why I needed the Apostle Paul's example. I can report to you today that the Apostle Paul stayed in there. The Apostle Paul was focused. The Apostle Paul never gave up the faith. You see, the old saying still rings true. It's not how you start this race. It's how you and I finish this race that counts. I want to close with again reading and repeating Paul's words in Philippians 10 and then following. He says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have arrived at my go, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, Paul says, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, Just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For I have often told you before, and now I tell you even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they may be like His glorious body. I do not know where you are at in your spiritual journey, It may be that you have never asked Jesus to be Savior and Lord of your life. That means you've never started on a spiritual journey. But you can today. Maybe you've just never given much thought to spiritual things and your spiritual life. And maybe your pursuit of life has been all about yourself and what you want. I'm here today. To invite you to come to Christ Jesus today. Ask Him into your life. Just tell Him, Jesus, I need you. I want to begin that great pursuit of knowing you. You can know Christ today. He will not refuse to show Himself to you. Will you pray with me? Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I am praying, Lord, because I know that your Holy Spirit is talking to them right this moment. I pray that they will 
listen to your voice. They will begin that pursuit today. Lord, there may be those I am praying for right now. I've spoken to them and they are struggling in their life pursuit. They may have started well, but Lord, today they are floundering in their spiritual life, lagging behind. They've stopped church or reading their Bible or prayer. They've stopped thinking about eternal values. I pray that you would speak to them today and may they open their heart to you. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Thank you for joining us today here at Calvary Temple. We're so glad you did and at this same time next week we'll be back. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, will nothing else matter. And nothing in this world will do Jesus, you're the center And everything revolves around you Jesus, you at the center of it all the center of it all. Oh, Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning Yes, 
Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. For every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, for it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, I know it's all about you, yes it's all about you.